A number of months ago, I asked my viewers to fill out a survey about what their dream Fallout game would be like, taking some input about gameplay styles, story elements, and settings. I also wanted to hear specific story and gameplay ideas that a viewer may have, some of which I'll share later. With over 800 responses, here's what you guys tell me was your dream fall game. Let's go ahead and go over the numbers. Do note, however, this stuff was mostly done as a for fun exercise, and they really shouldn't be taken too seriously. Also, every question had an other option, so you will see a lot of charts with Pac-Man Mouse. When asking what their dream Fallout gameplay would be like, the majority stated they would like it to have most similar to 3 and New Vegas, with 24.7%. Unsurprisingly, Classic Fallout received the smallest share of the vote, bar the other options, at 6.2%. The others largely stated they wish to mix elements of gameplay together, for any Vegas mostly. Some did ask to break the mold, such as returning to a tactic style game or following the way of the Metro series, but still most wanted to blend the games. Asking whether it should be single player, co-op, online multiplayer, or an MMO, the dominating choice was single player. Next was co-op, then online multiplayer. Only three people asked for an MMO. Most of the others seemed to ask for single player with optional co-op. Some even asked for single player with an MMO companion. Next, I asked for protagonist background story material. And yes, this is a reference to my video on a blank slate protagonist, which you should totally go watch after this. The division and opinions were much more balanced. 31.2% said they wanted a complete blank slate, 31% said they wanted some loose history, and 27.2% stated multiple choice. Of the preferred power armor gameplay, the overwhelming majority stated they wanted to retain the vehicle style of 4 and 76. 23.4% stated they'd rather have the more traditional style that we've seen from 1 through New Vegas. As for the other options, they asked for a mix, which seems to be a rather hard concept to follow through with, but I'm sure there's ideas for how to pull it off. On the subject of power armor training, 38.8% stated they wanted to bring back the perk, while 14% stated they did not want it to return at all, 41.5% stated they want to return it, but as a skill, which was a possible solution presented in my video on power armor training, if you want to check that out after this video. Given this is my audience that I did a survey on, I'm not too terribly surprised this won the most votes. Of the others, most appear to talk about mixing the perk and the skill system together. At this point, you probably noticed that the other options have largely voiced the idea of mixing things together. It isn't too terribly surprising. Many people tend to gravitate to the middle options when available. A case in point for the subject of middle ground options, when asked about the fusion core system, the majority stated they would rather keep it but alter it, while 28.8 stated they would discard it and 12.8 wanted to keep it as is. Of the others, they're mostly talking about how they would alter its duration of effect, ways to modify the cores, or even simply stated they didn't care too much one way or the other. When asked about if there would be an option to choose a faction in the main quest, the absolute overwhelming majority at 83.9% stated that there would be an option with multiple choices. At 4.4%, the next biggest choice, there would not even be a faction, followed by 3.7, stating that the narrative would compel the protagonist to a specific faction, and finally a binary choice of two main factions at 2.5%. Of the other choices, there was some talk about establishing your own faction. One even wanted to choose every bit of detail about them, which sounds like it would be hard to pull off, but this is a dream follow game, so fair enough. Some wanted to have an option to lone wolf it, and others just didn't have much of an opinion. We move on to the subject of where the game would take place, and this, of course, had the biggest variety of choices. Lots of default options and a barrage of other inputs. So many other inputs, in fact, Google Forms gave up and lumped a lot of the choices in another category, and it won the biggest share by 12.8%. The biggest share of the default choice was 12.1% with New York City. The Big Apple got the big votes. Chicago was next at 11.7, New Orleans at 9.7, San Francisco at 6.5, Austin at 5.9, Detroit at 4.5, and Anchorage at 3.8. There's more, a lot more, but I kind of want to skip a bit to the already visited 3D games. 1% or 9 votes said they wanted to revisit the Mojave. 0.6 or 5 votes 
said they wanted to revisit the Appalachia Wasteland. Interestingly, four of these five votes said they wanted a single player game, with one of them wanting co-op. 0.3% or three votes wanted to return to the Capital Wasteland and one person wanted to return to the Commonwealth. I also wanted to touch up a bit on some of the out of US settings. Toronto, which is the assumed location of the Ronto, as mentioned by Asher of Fallout 3's Pit DLC, had the most votes at 2.8. London sat at 2%, Hong Kong sat at 1.3%, and Tokyo sat at 0.9%. The others were pretty varied, a handful of statewide choices. One guy really wanted Van Buren. And finally, one guy, response 76, said worldwide. Big dreams. Big dreams. When asked how civilized they wanted their wastelands to be, the majority, at 60%, wanted growing nations with powerful armies. 28.6% wanted small settlements with weak governing bodies, and 2.55% asked for complete anarchy. The others largely got into the mix-it camp. On the subject of timeline positions, 57.5% wanted it to take place around the time of 3, New Vegas, and 4. 15.5% wanted it to take place around Fallout 2. 7.7% wanted it to take place far into the future. 6.9% wanted sometime around Fallout 1 and 5.5 wanted immediately after the Great War. There were actually two responses that wanted to defy tradition and set the game before the Great War. Huh. With those who wanted to defy expectations in such a grand way, I'm curious what plans they might have had. Response 264 didn't go into detail other than the game take a place in pre-war London, having the Brotherhood, Enclave, Death Claws, and Super Mutants there. Response 800 gave a bit more detail though. He wants jiggle physics. A tasteful amount, of course. He's classy. The game would be set before and after the Great War. It's about seeing how things went down. And the cast is largely female for some undisclosed reason. I wonder why. Of the others, some take place a few decades after a specific title. Some didn't care and one even wanted the player to choose where the game takes place. When asked if FAV would be involved, 47% said no, 29.8% said yes, but a strain from another game, and 14.6% said yes, new strain. Of the others, the input ideas were rather mixed, from sister projects of FEV to curing Superman sterility via tactics. Sticking to the general subject of FEV, the majority wanted supermutants, but ones who migrated from other regions at 50.8. 27.2 stated they did not want supermutants to return, and 10.3 wanted mutants that were created in the region. Of the others, a number of respondents talked about how scarce their use of them would be. Asking if the Brotherhood of Steel would be in the game, 49.5 was in favor of a small outpost, 25.3 was in favor of the BOS not being in the game, 15.1 stated they wanted the BOS to have a large chapter in their dream game. The others were pretty varied, from the BOS being mentioned like an urban legend to having a rogue chapter. Asking if the Enclave would be involved, the results were fairly similar, 37.6 saying yes, small outpost, 33% saying no, 19.5 saying yes, large chapter, the others, likewise, were pretty varied from remnants to mentions. Deathclaws were a little bit more favored than the Enclave, BOS, or Supermutants, with 60.3 saying they would at least have a few Deathclaws in their game. 17.9 saying no, 13.6 saying lots. The others were pretty interesting. Some wanted Gator Claws, some wanted to bring back the Intelligent Deathclaws, and some just wanted Deathclaw eggs. Asking about the currency of the title, most wanted different currency depending on the dominating faction of an area. 27.5 were in favor of cabs, 18.8 were in favor of a unique currency of the game's region. Finally, 3.2 didn't want currency and favored a bartering only economy. Of the others, there were a fair bit of mixed answers. A number saying caps should be universal, but also have localized currencies. Asking about weapon degradation, 66.2% liked that as a feature and wanted it to return. 27.1 said no. A lot in the others said they bring it back, but either as an optional thing or having degradation localized to specific parts of a weapon. I wanted to get a bit more details about the gameplay and plot ideas that people had in mind. So I allowed people to give me open response answers, some of which I am sharing with you. Naturally, with so many responses, I can't share everything, and it's really hard to choose who specific responses to go with. Some are highly detailed, while others would rather give enough room to interpret with limited amount of details. One of the more detailed answers comes from Puglife777, which covers a lot from descriptions of the setting, factions and their histories, along with plot outlines. I'm not going to read all this thoroughly, but rather just summarize the ideas listed. The game is set in New Orleans 2300 and has become a wall-defended city that's more or less an island due to regular flooding. 
Radioactive fog, raiders aplenty, getter claws, and mire lurks. Still, there are a group of defenders called the Cajun Navy that protects the settlers, which I imagine is something similar to the Minutemen. Rampant slavery, aristocrats, it sounds like there are definite classes in this New Orleans. Pug Life 777 describes in great detail how the plot unfolds. Again, highly summarized, it starts off with a player called the Mariner floating towards the port of New Orleans. A tutorial mission featuring a traitor and a possible temporary companion named Audrey. Audrey is killed in an explosion. You learn that a group called the Free Orleans Faction caused it. People in the city hate that faction. They consider them terrorists. President of New Orleans, Fontaine, gives a speech about crushing the FOF but needing time to gear up for the military campaign. Player meets Mardi Gras Raiders, known collectively as the Confederation, who are actually three separate Raider groups who love New Orleans culture and worship various cultural sites. There's infighting between the groups on whether they should launch the assault on the city or continue their trade cam with the underground mafia. Player gets to work with the Cajun Navy in exchange for their help in the future. You can come across a lot of instances of slavery due to it. Eventually, the player comes across the FOF's base of operation. The player has a chance to destroy them in a tough fight or listen to the leader. Leader will explain the horrible tactics, that the New Orleans government is corrupt, controlled by oligarchs, mob bosses, and slavers. It becomes the FOF's absolute destiny to destroy that government. Of course, asking about their taxes, they justify their terroristic nature by explaining they cannot fight Fontaine in conventional warfare and have to use their tactics to gain an advantage. The player will be asked to work with the FOF. They'll attack if the player rejects. Of course, the player can also join them or join them as a double agent. The player meets a powered armor group called the Restoration. These people claim to be a successor of Enclave and the Institute. The patrol will lead you to their headquarters, multi-level vault. Their leader tells you their goal is to restore the United States and use a tactic system highly reminiscent of Arthur's Brotherhood, but aided by sense. Joining the group gives the player X01. Going back to the New Orleans president, you could tell him about your meeting with the FOF and tell him that you're willing to work as a double agent. Then you will have to work with some morally dubious factions in New Orleans to prove your trustworthiness. Oligarchs will ask you to kill Fontaine, telling Fontaine's will have him ask you to kill the oligarchs. The story essentially ends with the Battle of New Orleans. You can side with Fontaine, side with the FOF, side with Restoration, side with the Raiders, or side with no one. Pug Life describes the gameplay as being similar to 4, 76, and New Vegas, utilizing needs and emphasizing survival as a gameplay. He wants to replace bullet sponges with far more intelligent AI that focus on damaging specific body parts. They also want to bring back skills, having speech checks similar to New Vegas but not showing the needed skill, but having dialogue color differently. Silent protagonist, full on dialogue with more than four choices, along with meaningful options. No essential NPCs, power armor is rare along with energy weapons. I'm guessing he wants it to be as rare as the energy weapons were in Fallout 1. Fusion cores will return but last significantly longer. He also describes many changes in the way settlements would handle. While I won't go into detail, it is on the screen if you want to read it. However, that ends Pug Life's New Orleans game. Actually, there's another game set in New Orleans by Thomas, or at least I think it's supposed to be New Orleans. He has this chosen as a location, but a lot of the game reads like it's meant to take place farther out west. Regardless, he doesn't focus on little details or the entire plot outline, but instead focuses on the big picture of the main quest. In it, the super mutants have a latent hive mind connection. Smart mutants act as the focal points for their collective consciousness. He even points to some actions by the master that can be used to justify this ability, even if it was never fully utilized prior to his death. In his idea, there's three chapters of the Brotherhood, each with a unique elder, that are all rather rogue in nature between helping people and distributing technology. They, with the help of the players, discover the high mind feature and could try to use their resources to tap into Super Mutant's collective intelligence. Naturally, this is controversial. Some believe that this will cause a lot of problems and the mutants will eventually die off, so there's really no point in it. Others see this as an excellent weapon that could be utilized, bringing mutants to aid them on the battlefield. Regardless of choice, one of the three chapters will go against the player and join the local raiders to stop them. Then two chapters that did join up establish a proto-government across the settlements. There's six possible choices, leave the mutants as they are, activate the hive mind but do nothing else for them, activate the hive mind and subjugate them using FEB as a weapon, activate the hive mind, don't subjugate them, and the player connects with them. They no longer see the humans as an enemy. Activate the hive mind, don't subjugate them, and cure super mutant sterility. The final choice is the same as choice five, but convincing the Brotherhood to connect with the hive mind and unite the BOS of mutants into a single group. Thomas doesn't really speak too much about gameplay, except that dialogue choices would have higher requirements with multiple stats to check. 
such as convincing a scientist, needing an aid in intelligence, and knighting in speech. Then there's something like Kai 016's Seattle-based game, which is quite in the workshop phase, where there's thoughts being bounced around and possibly open to input to try to develop a product. Kind of like the way a couple of writers would present ideas to develop a story. He chooses Seattle due to the Space Needle being recognizable and so he can borrow from the West Coast lore, given that Washington is right next door. Also to have a nuclear winter. His plot focuses on an early NCR northward expansion, but also explains that he would want the groups in the games to have relatively equal sizes. Essentially, the NCR doesn't push the manpower that far up north. In fact, he even says that he wouldn't mind them being a minor faction holding specific settlements. He also suggests that the Enclave be in control of pre-war factories possibly prior to the oil rig explosion, but notes that this could possibly mess with the cannon. He states that he would want the player to choose if they want to side with an early NCR, setting Seattle up for NCR annexation, or side with the Enclave, or possibly even side with a local community, maybe even uniting various communities to kick the NCR and Enclave out. He also lists possibly finding a Canadian resistance group formed from the American annexation, exploring tribes to the west, camouflage death claws, and sea monsters. Next, I will read some smaller responses, some focused on specific ideas or those with simple desires, such as yet another New Orleans game, this time by Glitch Microwave, focusing on a classic Rebellion vs. Big Fashion type storyline, well, three Rebellion factions, with of course, options to choose who to side with, and featuring water-based gameplay, often comparing it to Subnautica with underwater areas to explore, or Mike and Mike putting emphasis on evolved factions and lore that affects the gameplay. He wants to use classic tropes of the franchise, such as the Brotherhood and Enclave, along with discarded ideas, such as Born Ghouls. Real Colonel Quaritch desires a vision of approved FPS gameplay in line with more traditional styles, along with a toggable hardcore mode, improved crafting. In addition, his narrative is mostly focused on the opening of the game, a player character that lived a pretty good life, being born into a settlement founded by Vault Dwellers. The player is sent out on a quest after the disappearance of an important person and a scouting party that never reported back. Wiggins desires a game specifically focusing on a caravan establishing their own trading outposts in Anchorage and developing it along with nearby settlements into growing nations. Wiggins also asks for a ton of freedom, allowing the player to just walk away at any time, even avoid all combat if the player has the diplomatic chops. There's also a strong emphasis to have no returning factions from prior games. Everything is completely original. Those last two might be something Relic would agree with, due to him asking for better first-person shooter gameplay, along with a strong focus on original ideas. Bugo once expanded unarmed and melee moves, and expansion on the cybernetic system, including visual changes. As far as story, Bugo really wants to explore the new plague, possibly have the player look for a cure, all set up in Salt Lake City, with Utah's lore. Kaiser 11 simply wants to drive and repair vehicles, possibly doing parkouring. He also wants more punishing addictions. Kex wants to see the gunners and talent companies utilized in a new way, suggesting them band together to create a new army, acting as the primary antagonist. Also, there's a Lone Ranger from California. Pips is very simple, he just wants to have a game about surviving a nuclear hellscape. Likewise, Smegmugman, who reigns supreme, as he'll tell you himself, just wants to have a Fallout game set in Tokyo so he can see Godzilla, or whatever the Fallout equivalent of Godzilla would be. Now, as I said, this survey was not done to be extremely serious or even gauge an accurate measurement of fandom desires. Specifically, this was targeted at my own audience and out loud a lot of freedom, not only in giving responses, but also editing one's own response, not requiring a Google account, and even allowing the user to submit multiple responses. The data was indeed vulnerable to manipulation. And while I certainly do believe there were people who would manipulate the data if they really wanted to, there is really no benefit actually doing so and would only waste your own time. Actually, I do know there are a few people who submitted duplicate responses, so I know that the information is not completely accurate. Still, I wanted to point out the flaws of the survey, but also emphasize that it wasn't designed to collect and analyze the information in a methodical way. Now, there are lots of ideas that I did not mention, and not because I think any are necessarily bad, but there's really no way I could reasonably cover them all. I did consider having the results of the survey be publicly viewable, but doing so in its current form would be exposing some emails, potential usernames on other sites, and Discord information. Of course, people who simply put down their online handle have already given me permission to use their names in this video, but there were those who went out of their way to give me more. Honestly, those who submitted answers to me and giving me this private material have put a lot of faith in me. Betraying that trust would be very low. 
Perhaps I'll delete those responses, then release the name only ones to the public. This would manipulate the data even more, however the private information of others would be spared. Before that, I could probably reach out to some users and ask if they want to change some of the responses to affect the privacy and keep their own voices heard. Choices, decisions. There's just a lot of ideas that I feel could be fine if shared. That said, maybe even the ones who are already giving me the okay to share their names don't actually want to have it publicly posted so freely. I don't know. That's something to look into. Different options. Different opinions. Oh yeah, sorry I've been away for so long. Between holidays, birthdays, and playing a lot of Fallout 76, I haven't had a significant amount of time to make videos, but I'm back. Also, I plan to release a video on Fallout 76. I'll be talking about my opinions after playing well over 100 hours, completing all the main quest materials, and recording 80 hours of footage. And as you know, I try to be as unbiased as possible. Subscribe if you want to check that out. You guys have a good one.